right? And hips, fine. You're good. Push up tall, Olivia. All the way up, feet. Okay, you don't need to get scrappy, slow down. You don't need to work harder because you're tired, right? Swing up and feet. And up, tighten up, Olivia. Tighten up, Olivia, uh-oh. You were rushing, overworking everything. Your shoulder hex was too close to the bar and you never got it back together. The part that doesn't make sense about that is you have a lot of handstands in that. I understand if your shoulder hex is tight, the pack might be a little crazy. That makes sense. But then you have a handstand and you have a toe on to get everything back under control. And you did it. Shapashaf was okay and then you went kept cast handstand short. If one skill is off, you have to get it back together on the next handstand and that did not happen. Through your hips now. Slow down and hit it all the way up. Pushing up. Feet, arch. Nice pack, good job. Hold here, please. Better. Up and squeeze, come on. Hop. Olivia, come on. Feet now, squeeze. Ankles together, Liv. Ankles. Stay, uh, 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 why? Why, why, why? You're dancing for no reason. A tenth for this step and no bonus. Come on. Slow down, Olivia. Slow down, Olivia. Well, everyone, welcome to the skating lesson. My name is Dave Lees, and I wanted to give an update on the Maggie Haney situation. Uh, Maggie Haney has had an interim suspension that is upheld by USA Gymnastics. Also, if you are new here, please sure to subscribe below and smash that like button if you like uh, what we're putting down because today we're going to discuss Maggie Haney's rules. Uh, there's a lot to break down in the ongoing uh, investigation that USA Gymnastics has that is going on about uh, Maggie Haney's coaching practice and whether or not she is abusive. Uh, Maggie Haney was uh, the longtime coach of Lori Hernandez. Uh, she also coached Ariana Agrippides, uh, Jasmine Foberg, who's now at the University of Florida. And she's the current coach of Riley McCusker and Olivia Greaves, two uh, current contenders for the Olympic team, uh, potentially for uh, a specialist spot, which we will go into later on. Uh, and she also is certainly uh, someone who will be a major player uh, in gymnastics this year. Uh, and she also coached uh, Zoe Gravier, Skylar Caruso, um, and a number of other gymnasts who are currently uh, committed to uh, attend NCAA universities at Division I colleges. Um, so let's go into the current uh, articles that have come out. Uh, the hearing started this week, and on uh, Tuesday, Maggie Haney was suspended by USA Gymnastics. The interesting thing there is that though Lori Hernandez uh, has been reported to be someone that filed a complaint, she had not actually testified at the point when uh, Maggie was indeed suspended. So it is uh, interesting. Obviously, USA Gymnastics saw something, uh, and we can go into whether or not this is just because... Um, there are a lot of opinions flying around about whether or not Maggie is being potentially scapegoated. Uh, in this situation, uh, to be made an example of, uh, certainly things have changed within USA Gymnastics as the board of directors has changed. One thing we do know is that they were alerted to complaints by uh, Lori Hernandez and her family as of 2016. Now, as the board has changed, they are now acting on this three and a half years later. Is this a situation where um, USA Gymnastics is now uh, on the moral right side? Is this for um, uh, you know publicity? Is this to change their public image? It's all unclear uh, at this time, but I did want to uh, give an update. So the article uh, that came out last night says, a USA Gymnastics hearing panel upheld Maggie Haney's interim suspension Wednesday leaving her prohibited from being at any event or location where minor age gymnasts are present, the Southern California News Group has learned. The hearing panel's decision to leave the suspension in place severely hinders Haney's ability to coach U.S. national team member Riley McCusker, an Olympic medal contender, and prevents her from coaching Olivia Greaves, another top gymnast at all. 
Haney, a coach of Olympic and world champions, was suspended by USA Gymnastics Monday pending the outcome of a hearing into verbal and emotional abuse allegations against her. Under the terms of the interim measure suspension, Haney is not allowed to have contact with minor age gymnasts. While McCusker, a world champion gold medalist, is 18, a majority of gymnasts at U.S. national team training camps and other events or facilities are minors. Um, also to note there that Lori Hernandez is now um, present at these camps and has uh, you know, a complaint against Haney as well. Any person suspended from all contact with minors is prohibited from being in a gym where minors are present. USA Gymnastics spokesperson Ellie Rutland said Tuesday, Haney had coach McCuster and Greaves, 15, a U.S. junior national team member at MG Elite Gymnastics in suburban Monmouth Junction, New Jersey, 45 miles from New York City. USA Gymnastics currently has women's national training camps scheduled for February 29th to March 3rd and April 8th to 11th in Indianapolis. There are four major international meets scheduled in March. The Olympic trials are June 25th to 28th in St. Louis, followed by an Olympic preparation camp July 13th to 16th in Indianapolis. Olympic champion Lori Hernandez and at least a half dozen families have filed complaint with USA Gymnastics against Haney, according to USA Gymnastics documents and six people familiar with the cases. Haney is alleged to have screamed, sworn at, threatened, bullied, and harassed gymnasts on a regular basis, according to USA Gymnastics documents and interviews with six people familiar with the complaints. Uh, Haney has also told injured gymnasts to remove boot casts and to continue training and competing according to USA Gymnastics documents and interviews. Um, just a side note there, um, while those are certainly substantial claims, they're also th pretty much um, very similar uh, to uh, things that we've heard about almost every single elite coach. So it is interesting uh, that Haney has been suspended already. I think that's where perhaps some of the skepticism is and some of the fear in the coaching world is because there, I mean, what is bullying, what is threatening, what is harassing versus what is coaching? I mean, coaches are pushing. There's obviously an element of tone uh, with certain coaches and we can discuss this and I'll discuss why Maggie has always stood out to me. Uh, I certainly think she's a fascinating personality and she's obviously uh, has certain uh, merits as a coach that really do stand out. Russell Prince Haney's attorney said there is no truth to the allegations against the coach um, and the hearing panel heard a second day of testimony Wednesday and the hearing will be continued to February 17th according to three people familiar with the investigation. Uh, this is Scott Reed's article in the OC Register. Um, I did just want to uh, touch on the fact that you know these charges are the same things that could be said against that we've read it about you know Mary Lee Tracy against um, what's going on with Anna Lee and and several other coaches uh, associated with gymnastics so it is interesting that Haney is the first one being suspended but it goes into why um, that is and I do think that it's interesting uh, Russell Prince is her attorney he has represented several other members of the gymnastics community who have been um, accused of safe sport violations now, one clarification is that this is a USA Gymnastics Safe Sport investigation. It is not a US Safe Sport Center. And just to clarify, because they both have the same name and this gets very confusing and the articles become very confusing. So a USA Gymnastics Safe Sport investigation is held by the governing body. Whereas a US Center for Safe Sport investigation and hearing would be held, and that would be something that would be held by the National Safe Sport Body, and that would be something related to sexual abuse in most cases. However, this is not sexual abuse in nature, um, and this is about harassment, bullying, and kind of the rules of USA Gymnastics, and that is why uh, USAG is in charge of this hearing. And this is interesting because USAG is certainly an organization trying to rebrand itself. It's going to be uh, in the headlines a lot. Uh, their litigation has not been settled yet. They have survivors that certainly are organized and have um, certainly been pushing uh, for a lot of reforms. And this seems like a reform that perhaps they would be for, which is why uh, the cynic in all of us is wondering whether Haney is being hung out to dry because there are many coaches who are still coaching at the national team training camps that one could look at. Uh, Al Fong and Armine Bertien um, are coaches of several members 
of the national team. Al Fong was the coach of two gymnasts who died in the late 80s and early 1990s. Uh, he's certainly written about in the book Little Girls in Pretty Boxes. And he's someone who is coaching several members uh, of the team. So one does have to wonder about this. You know, why is this case uh, more serious than others? Uh, Lori Hernandez was certainly uh, the darling of the 2016 Olympic Games. She was very young at the time. Uh, and some of this has been very public. And I wanted to go into why Maggie Haney has always been so fascinating uh, to me since we first met her around uh, the 2013 season when uh, Lori was really uh, coming into prominence. And one thing in, in interviews with Gymcastic and on Flow Gymnastics that's always really stood out is that Maggie is very confident in herself. And she always... <laughs> has a tendency to say, I, 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 I made her, I taught her to dance like that, I taught her everything she knows. Uh, I thought that Jazzy was a mess when she first came into the gym and I couldn't believe it, but you know, I thought that she would work hard. Um, and she talks a lot about people coming into work and they're here to come to work. And Maggie's quotes are interesting because they seem to lack somewhat, uh, some self-awareness uh, in her coaching videos, she often has a tone. And it reminds me of when Mary Lee Tracy was really becoming very um, popular and prominent. There was a video that was put out by USA Gymnastics in 1996. It was called, you know, A Day in the Gym or uh, you know, with Mary Lee and it was coaching. And you could tell that she coached each gymnast uh, differently. JC Phelps was going for the world championships in Puerto Rico at that time. And from watching the video, it was evident um, to even Helen Keller, perhaps, that J.C. Phelps was certainly the favorite. She had the classical gymnast body. Um, she was very talented, and she could uh, perform what Mary Lee Tracy asked of her. Whereas Robin Phelps was a younger gymnast who was still being molded. But Mary Lee did not really appear to have patience for Robin Phelps. And with both Mary Lee and with... Um, Maggie, there's a tone that can come out in these videos and it would come out and say, Robin, Robin, ribs in Robin. And over time, it just was interesting that perhaps Mary Lee forgot that she was being filmed, was less aware of the cameras, but it was really coming out. Also later in 1999 and 2000, uh, Mary Lee Tracy really spoke with Alyssa Beckerman in demeaning ways on television uh, when she was not performing well. And it seemed that the coach's ego, in my opinion, was, um, you know, uh, becoming uh, oversized at, at that point in time. And there have been instances with Maggie Haney uh, after her success with Lori Hernandez that have really um, been somewhat alarming. Uh, she certainly has enjoyed uh, her position on the national team in interviews. There was an interview on Jim Castic with both Maggie Haney and Amy Borman. And it was interesting just how much Maggie seemed into um, the USA Gymnastics culture, in my opinion. It seemed that it was really fulfilling for her on a personal level, level rather than being about the athletes. And there seems to be a switch in coaches when they have one successful athlete and want several more. Well, immediately after the Olympics, we saw a Riley McCusker uh, go into prominence, and she was a gymnast that had had some success Although, um, as Maggie told all of us in interviews, that she came with some issues. Uh, she didn't like her uneven bar routine, couldn't do a dismount, perhaps, that Maggie liked. And she talked about how she struggled to qualify for elite. And it seemed that Riley was pushed quite uh, quickly, and she was at the American Cup when she had a near disaster on uh, the balance beam a routine that was quite scary, uh, where she missed her foot on the balance beam and landed on her head. Uh, and it was certainly the start of labeling a Riley McCusker as what would be known as perhaps a head case in gymnastics or someone that is unable to hit under pressure. And it certainly became a recurring theme uh, with uh, how Riley is characterized in the gym trinette. And it does seem that Riley has suffered a lot of injuries, um, which is common in elite gymnastics, but she does seem to be pushed uh, rather hard and this year Riley um, was diagnosed with rhabdomyolosis and this was interesting because all of the gymnasts were um, competing this summer and they went to the US Classic they went to the Pan Am Games then they were gonna go to the US Championships then the World Training Camp 
and then uh, the world championships and it's a lot of time to be at full routine shape and injuries happen and there didn't seem to be a tremendous amount of pacing and though it would be uh, certainly beneficial for someone like Riley McCusker to get competition experience uh, one would surmise that perhaps Riley would want positive uh, competition experience and not to be uh, burned out and then making mistakes that were too much and sure enough Riley uh, was sick at the nationals and when this came out that Riley had rhabdomyolosis right after she was seen being uh, ill on television at the U.S. championships and being scratched from the competition it was certainly alarming because this was something that Tom Forrester uh, was even asked about ahead of time if these athletes should be doing everything now in some interviews coaches have said that they don't really know what the rules are and certainly in the Marta Caroli era uh, even though things were very controversial uh, there there was a clear plan of what athletes needed to do and it was understood uh, when you were a favorite of Marta USCG seems to be trying to make sure that everyone is fair they may go by the rankings more but there seems to be a lack of trust and strategic planning um, that sometimes does happen where the coaches don't really know uh, what is going to happen in decision and and this does seem to be one of the casualties but it is interesting because you know the article at the time read that McCusker 18 a member of the US squad that won uh, the team title at last year's world championships pulled out of the world selection camp because of rhabdomyolosis a syndrome where muscle tissue is damaged because of injury or overexertion and can lead to kidney damage uh, McCusker's withdrawal comes a month after she was scratched from the U.S. championships in Kansas City, saying she was physically ill. Uh, and, of course, she was being coached by Maggie Haney under investigation at the time. And they did learn that um, there were complaints back uh, into 2016 and that USA Gymnastics General Counsel Mark Busby has been aware of complaints against Haney since 2017. Um, and the article goes on to... Um, uh, discuss what uh, she has been accused of. Uh, alleged victims of Haney's abuse and their parents have repeatedly been frustrated by USA Gymnastics' handling of the investigation. In particular, the national governing body's failure to hold a hearing on that matter, according to four people familiar with uh, the investigation. Uh, Rhabdomyolis is a syndrome where the contents of dead muscle fibers or tissues are broken down and released into the bloodstream. USA Gymnastics described McCuster's case of rhabdomyolosis as mild. Uh, serious cases of the syndrome can result in renal failure when the kidneys cannot remove waste and concentrated urine. Three Oregon football players were hospitals in 2017 after what they described as excessive off-season conditioning workouts. At least one of the players said he was diagnosed with rhabdomyolosis. A dozen University of Houston women's soccer players were diagnosed with the ailment after one player described as a Texas a television station as punishment practices. So that article is certainly damning and definitely um, not something that USA Gymnastics would likely uh, enjoy having it coming out. But they were upfront about uh, McCusker's diagnosis and didn't try to hide it. And it was very specific. Um, perhaps they knew it was going to come out, one could surmise, but we don't know uh, for sure. But it, it is interesting. Um, also, there were several other gymnasts, as uh, Haney has been, quite a skilled uh, level 10 and elite coach and she's been getting a number of gymnast college scholarships she's known in particular uh, for her work shaping the gymnasts on uneven bars they perform beautiful handstands with ribs in uh, something that definitely makes them stand out uh, now other things that make them stand out is they have a um a leotard modeling uh, with a brand of leotards um, and they're often in poses uh, on social media that are, I would say, eyebrow raising, uh, in my opinion, um, given uh, the current climate of um, everything that's being discussed related to abuse and women's gymnastics and underage girls being vulnerable um, to this sort of thing. It, it does stand out. Um, and they certainly project a certain image of um, the thin, pretty blonde gymnast uh, that is rather alarming in a way. Um, certainly could be um, discussed uh, in negative ways and, and construed. Other things, Maggie and her assistant coach always wear 
very tight um, leggings on TV, <laughs> typically with a thong, uh, tight enough that we can see it on television, in my opinion, allegedly. Um, and that's something that has also stood out over time. Lots of makeup, lots of eyeliner, lots of jersey attitude, and certainly an interesting um, demeanor uh, for coaching, perhaps not what one would always expect. Uh, they definitely stood out uh, in, in a fun way and also an interesting way. Uh, also, Maggie has always been very confident and proud of her accomplishments. We know that she was the first uh, gymnast to score perfect tens on the balance beam and floor exercise at the University of North Carolina. Well, what also came out about her time at the University of North Carolina was that Maggie was involved with a party um, where one student, uh, where cops were called and there was actually a shooting um, and a fatality. Now, Maggie was charged because uh, they said that three athletes, three members of the gymnastics team uh, were arrested for alcohol law violations. Now, this is not uncommon, but Maggie was charged. And one of the interesting things there is that they were selling malt beverages to minors and selling without a valid state permit. Obviously, they were under the age of 21 themselves. Um, but interesting, nonetheless, certainly um, not something that a member of an NCAA team is expected to be doing, although perhaps more controversial for a gymnast to be doing it than a football player, which would be uh, more common. Um, but certainly an interesting character, certainly someone who is feisty, uh, perhaps would she like in a coach, but there is uh, always the debate of what is abuse and what is good coaching. Uh, there was a lot of whispering about Lori Hernandez when she turned professional. She signed with Cheryl, Cheryl Shade, a longtime agent. Uh, coaches and agents, not always uh, a relationship that is harmonious. But there were a lot of things that came out. Um, from the moment Lori turned pro, there were lots of whispers that Maggie was not happy all over the gym internet. Um, and certainly afterwards, when uh, Lori Hernandez was on Dancing with the Stars, Maggie was not uh, being shown. And, and it was becoming evident that there was uh, a rift. And we now know that there were actually... Um, uh, com a complaint that was filed by Lori Hernandez and her family. Uh, certainly at the time, there were rumors of texts being sent, uh, allegations. And what we do know is that uh, Maggie also made comments on Twitter where uh, when uh, there was a comment praising Allie Raisman as being humble, and Maggie said something along the lines of, Allie is so humble, unlike some people. And at that time, it was certainly uh, thought by many that that was a reference to Lori, although we don't know. Um, but by the 2017 American Cup, which was held in Newark, New Jersey, it was very clear to anyone in the media um, that Maggie and Lori were no longer a unit uh, by any means. Lori was there giving interviews, give, uh, doing an appearance, and the two of them were certainly uh, not uh, commingling on the floor. Also... We talked about Maggie in social media. She is one of the coaches who really does um, market her gym a great deal. She has a very small elite team, but she certainly knows how to promote her gymnast. They're often seen uh, performing on the uneven bars and other events, all of their upgrades and skills, which not every gym does. And I think as anyone who follows Olympic sports, it's certainly great. It does stand out as unusual. There's nothing wrong about it. But she it does understand the power of social media. And uh, one of the allegations about Maggie is that certain gymnasts were um, perhaps um, shunned or uh, not, um, that there was tension when they did not publicly support Maggie on social media following these allegations. That has been a uh, recurring uh, allegation against uh, this that has appeared in the gym internet. And it's very interesting because a certain gymnast, Sky Car Caruso, uh, Zoe Gravier, and uh, one other, have switched from uh, MG Elite to uh, First State Gymnastics, and both of their uh, Instagram accounts did go private uh, from being uh, girls who post on social media regularly, and it seemed like uh, certainly there was an unfriending uh, that happened, and they did appear to go dark immediately on social media and quite starkly, and that has stood out. Another thing that stood out is that Olivia Greaves has really been rising in the gym as Riley has been injured and struggling. And as Olivia uh, has been improving, it does see that Riley is someone who is 
struggling to make the Olympic team someone who was a favorite perhaps a year, year and a half ago. They both excel on the uneven bars, uh, and it could come down to uh, a spot between the two of them. And it, though Riley's parents have not spoken out uh, to Maggie uh, on her behalf yet, there was a statement that was posted online. There's a lot of debate about whether or not this statement was made to be public, though Olivia Greaves did post a supportive post uh, to Maggie Haney when uh, the articles came out about uh, her being under investigation uh, late this summer. And once again, Olivia Greaves' parents wrote a letter that was very strongly worded, uh, whether it was about a, you know, written by a parent with the help of an attorney, we don't know, but I, I did want to leave us with reading it. It says, I am taking it upon myself to write this statement in order to put into words just how unjust the situation surrounding Maggie Haney truly is. Never in my life or in my career as a gymnast, club owner, or gymnastics coach have I seen a witch hunt quite like this. First, let me start off by saying it's an Olympic year. We want and need our coach back now. My daughter Olivia is training for the Olympics. She's a two-time national team member and needs her coach more than ever. My daughter's mental health has been compromised by the acts of others who are intentionally making misrepresentations about Coach Haney, seeing my daughter so emotional and knowing there's nothing I can do to fix it as a mother. My heart breaks. I saw that sentence grammar is whoa, but okay, I continue. Olivia has been told she is forbidden to speak with or train with Coach Haney. That is cruel. Olivia is shattered. I can speak for myself and all of the families at the gym when I say this is an outrage. Olivia has been training with Maggie for over six years, starting when she was nine years old. Olivia has grown to become not only a phenomenal gymnast, but also a young woman whom we are incredibly proud of. I thank Coach, I thank Coach Haney every day for being a coach, a friend, and an inspiration to my daughter while growing up in her gym. Coach Haney has created more than a team. She has built a home not only for my daughter, but for all of the girls. The situation is needlessly and intentionally tearing the athlete's home apart. Coach Maggie has created a safe environment, always making sure the girls can be the best they can be on and off the mat. The allegations against Maggie are completely unfounded, and I know them to be untrue based upon my own personal experiences and observations. I am an active parent. I'm constantly at, in the gym, at practices, and to all the extracurriculars. I've seen my own eyes as an innocent woman be falsely accused. I am so upset about how traumatic this is, not only on Coach Haney, but every single athlete. What can be more traumatic than having your mentor ripped away on the advice of attention seekers and absentee parents? It's a, quite a, a damning line right there, uh, labeling attention seekers and absentee parents. All right, I'll continue, but that is one that should certainly uh, stand out. Not one person, party, affiliate, or council has reached out to any person in our program to ask for testimony. What good does contacting former families that are making complaints do when you don't seek counsel of current families and athletes? Well, that's, that's a valid point. Uh, this is the only way I know how to help, to write you with my heart on my sleeve. The suspension needs to be reversed. It was not appropriate to be placed. Do not dilute the reputation of all gymnastics coaches with ludicrous allegations. Mary Jo Greaves. Well, that is certainly uh, one uh, supportive mother. Uh, it did not appear to come from Mary Jo's account herself. So that is something that has really stood out uh, to members of the gymnastics community. One does have to wonder about the competition uh, between the Greaves family and the McCusker family as they um, are potentially battling for the same spot. It, it has appeared that this is kind of a collision coming in slow motion over the last uh, year or so. I did um, want to also discuss on the MG Elite rules, which are available online. Um, there are a couple really interesting things there. These have been um, uh talked over time and you know it says welcome to mg elite congratulations on being accepted to join the mg elite gymnastics team at mg elite we have produced several collegiate scholarship athletes state and regional champions international elite u.s team members u.s classic champion blah 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 standard um at mg elite our focus is and always will be the best interest of each individual child safety is of the utmost importance and will never be compromised we have a well thought out plan and we follow proper progressions each gymnast will move at her own pace you will not find harder working coaches than the MG Elite coaches. We provide a fun and positive learning environment for our gymnasts. Gymnast guidelines. MG Elite gymnasts are expected to be committed to the sport and their team. Good attendance is necessary. 
Girls are expected to work hard, complete their daily assignments, and be respectful to their coaches and teammates. The hard work thing just stands out. It, it does have a connotation of kids being lazy. I just, that did stand out to me as someone who works in communications. Wear leotards only for practice. No shorts, leggings, or extra clothes are allowed during training. That's also a little bit old school. Uh, you see Jim is wearing shorts. It does perhaps talk about body image. There are a lot of uh, people that have a lot of feelings about that one. Maintain good hygiene. Please come to practice clean with your hair tied back, nails kept short, and wearing deodorant. Well, that's necessary, but unusual for a room. Only healthy snacks will be allowed into the gym. Okay, this comment. With everything going on with body image, you know, I would have just left that out. Let that be an unspoken rule, uh, perhaps, in my opinion. Only water is allowed during practice. No sports drinks allowed. Well, that's about sugar, um, gymnasts, weight, everything. You know, I would have left that out as well. Let that be an unspoken rule. Cell phones are not allowed on the gym floor. Interesting as uh, that's not an, uh, an unfair rule, but the coaches certainly take videos themselves. Gymnasts must wait inside the building for pickup. That's fair. Level 9, 10, and elite gymnasts are not allowed to compete in high school gymnastics. Well, we do know high school gymnastics is the devil, and they have those messes, okay? Unless approved by your MG elite coaches. Parent guidelines. Parents are expected to support their gymnast, coaches, gym, program, and teammates. Parents are not allowed to stay and watch practice. Again, I would have deleted that so hard in the weight of Larry Nassar. You just, I mean, why are parents not allowed to watch? Now, we know parents can get too aggressive, but that is something, not a good look in the current era, in my opinion. Please try to communicate with coaches through email as much as possible. Email is the first choice of communication. Please only text your child's coach in case of an emergency. Now, parents can become unyieldy, but there is a subtext there that they do not want to talk to you, honey, in my opinion. Please do your best to be on time to practice. Please make sure your gymnast has great attendance. MG Elite coaches are fully committed, and we expect the girls and families to be fully committed as well. Even while injured, the girls are expected to be at practice. That was bolded. There are many things we can do even while they are moderately or severely injured. Negative comments will not be tolerated. If you have an issue, please go directly to the coaches, but don't go to their faces. Please remember to email them because that is the primary method of communication. And if it's really not an emergency, don't be texting them, okay? Talking with other parents will not solve the problem. Please communicate with your coaches. Do not coach your child. Do not compare your child to other gymnasts. We'll do that for you. Please email us if your gymnast will not be at practice. Parents must meet all financial obligations, no exceptions. If you run into a situation, please communicate with us. Remember, email first, okay? I don't know if money is considered an emergency. All competitions are required. We will have one travel meet each year that is optional. Besides that, all competitions are required. All gymnasts are expected to be at every competition. The only exception would be due to an injury. All optional gymnasts are required to use Maggie's floor music and choreography only. And remember, Maggie taught Lori how to dance and do everything. You will rent the music from Maggie. You will not be given a copy of your music. This is very strange. This stood out to me in you're paying for music, you're paying for choreography, and you're not even allowed to get a copy of the music because this is Maggie's doing. That, <laughs> I'm sorry. Bless. Bless their hearts. Again, this is a lack of self-awareness. Okay. There are no makeup practices. There are no exceptions to the listed practice schedule or tuition. Of course, the gymnast will miss practices occasionally due to schoolwork, illness, or occasional outside activities. However, the schedule and tuition set for each gymnast are not negotiable. This rule applies even during a time of injury. Although if you do have a problem, please um, come to us. But there are no exceptions. MG Elite Gymnast requires approval of all gymnastics camps your athlete may wish to attend. They don't want you learning skills from any of these coaches over the summer, these BS skills. Now, clothing training necessities. All gymnasts must always have two broken in pair of grips and gloves for the strap bar. All gymnasts should only wear long, tight-fitting white wristbands. Loose or short wristbands will make their wrists rip, and any color other than white looks bad at a meet. 
All gymnasts that are training your Chenkos on vault need to have a wrist guards for wrist protection. Beige colored only, all caps. Bring all team clothing to meets. Note to parents. Please let your child's coach know if there is something going on with your child, such as injury, illness, or medication, etc. Please communicate anything that may affect your athlete's ability to practice or compete. This is very important as we need to change our training plan for your gymnast. On the physical side, it is your job to ensure your gymnast gets enough sleep, gets proper nutrition, has the proper clothing needed, and gets to and from the gym and competitions on time. The emotional side of our sport is just as important. It is your role to provide unconditional love, support, and encouragement, especially when your gymnast is having difficulties with gymnastics. Why does that feel like a swipe against parents? I have to say that was, that's just amusing to me. Please fl plan family vacations around our competition schedule. Um, parental role during competition. MG Elite Gymnastics includes coaches, athletes, and parents as part of our team. We encourage all our parents to attend competitions. This is when your daughter gets to show off their hard work, cheer loud and often, however, do so in a respectful manner. Please don't be disruptive to other gymnasts, parents, or judges. Remember, you are representing MG Elite. Please only positive conversations. Never speak in a negative way about our gym, athletes, coaches, or athletes of another gym. Remember that people next to you can hear everything. Negative comments about meets, equipment, teams, etc. are not acceptable. Please do not contact your gymnast once they have been turned over to the coaches at a meet. We want their focus to be on the competition with as few distractions as possible. During the competitions, the coach will be responsible for your gymnast. Parents are not allowed to remove a gymnast from the competition floor for any reason. Parents, siblings, or friends are not permitted on the floor of a meet at any time. Parents are not allowed to promote any officials of a meet for any reason whatsoever. Well, I do think you have to put that in there because some of these parents are really intense, in my opinion. Do not call other gym gyms for meet information. MG Elite will provide information as soon as possible. But really, only email us. Don't text us. There is about... The annual registration fee is non-refundable. It's $95 per gymnast. Tuition is due before uh, the 5th of each month. Um, if your tuition is not paid in full by the 15th of the month, your daughter will not be allowed to participate in practice until you are paid in full. Um, tuition is a monthly fee that remains the same regardless of missed or canceled workouts. There are no refunds or makeup practices. Tuition is not prorated for any reason, including voluntary or involuntary removal from the team. There are also assessment fees uh, that happen. Uh, quite uh, extensive here. There are assessment guidelines. Um, and um, there is an MG Elite homeschool program. Um, and you'll be required to pay additional fees for the teacher. It's in quotation marks. We did see this class uh, in the ranch documentary. It was a bunch of gymnasts sitting in a room on their laptops. It certainly didn't appear to be a formal education of any means. Uh, Maggie's sister was the teacher. And this is uh, the book assignment uh, where Lori Hernandez told us that Julius Caesar was a pretty cool dude. Um, now, removal from MG Elite. This is a real great... Um, part of here. It does say, it is possible that a gymnast will have to leave our program. This may include the gymnast leaving due to the actions or inactions of her parents. We cannot tolerate parents who by their words or actions do not support the policies and values of our team program. MC, MG Elite reserves the right to refuse services to anyone at any time for any reason. Refunds are not given on any tuition or fees paid to MG Elite should you be asked to leave our program. And don't think you're getting our floor music or can use our choreography. If your needs are not being fulfilled by MG Elite, please let us know. Our coaches, administrators, and owners have an open door policy and we encourage communication. Remember, only communicate over email people. We acknowledge our program is not for everyone. If you decide to leave MG Elite and go to another gym, please let us know before you try another gym. Oh yeah, I'm sure that's going to go over really well. Letting us know you are considering a change will allow us to end our relationship in a positive manner. So it's basically saying if you're continuing another gym, if you're considering it, it's over people. But we want to be positive about it. They seem like really positive people. 
If you leave MG Elite for any reason whatsoever, either by your choice or ours, you will not be given a refund or any fees paid. This includes assessment and any and all gym related fees. Well, it does seem like a, a fun gym with, with just a couple of, of rules. Um, I, I, I do think it seems like Maggie is um, perhaps um, likes a little bit of control, um, but I, I do think that she has um, produced some beautiful bar workers. Uh, there is certainly um, uh, articles uh, in New Jersey uh, about this, and it's interesting that there. Um, Maggie always talks about hard work a lot, and it's interesting because we they talk about um, rhabdomyolysis, and it's it, they just it goes together in my mind. Uh, perhaps not to anyone else. Uh, I am. Um, you know, maybe not the nicest girl. Um, but there is a quote in an article that came out uh, in the New Jersey um, press. Um, and, and Maggie says that their gym is very undercover. Um, they're not even sure if people come here every week to bring their kid to recreational classes, really understand what's happening in our gym. They see these great flips and these girls doing amazing things, but I don't think they understand until they see them on TV. Now she talks about her gymnast being known for perfect execution and beautiful lines. An interesting note that um, Maggie's assistant, Vicky, is um, the owner of the gym, or from her family, is the owner. Um, Maggie talks about parents bringing their kids into the gym. Um, and, you know, everyone wants to go to the Olympics, but that only works um, for a day or two. She wants people that are going to work every day, people. Every day, all right? Not one or two days everyone thinks that their kid is going to go um to the olympics so it is uh, certainly not something to be wasting maggie's time with all right um remember white grips bays wrist guards get it together all right we are renting the music and only maggie's choreography well, but we Definitely encourage open communication with everyone. And if you're going to consider another gym change, please let us know so we can end our relationship in a positive manner. Bye now. Good night.